All right, YouTube. Today we're talking about mechanical stress and strain. And to do that, I want to take a look at two different rods, one which is under tension, the other which is under compression. And the first thing I need to clarify is the difference between tension and compression. See, when an object is under tension, it's being pulled apart. And when an object is under compression, it's being pushed on from each end, trying to squish the part together. Now, starting off with stress. Now, there's lots of ways to stress a part, but today we're going to just look at what's called normal stress. And normal stress occurs any time we're either pulling or pushing on a part along the axis of that part. If we were to push, say, sideways on a part, that would be what's called a shear stress. And that's an issue for another day. Now, when discussing normal stress, I see most people start at tension. But in order to really get a handle on what's going on with stress, I actually want to look at compression. Or really, I want to look at a compression, which you've probably seen before. So imagine we put a piston inside a closed cylinder with some gas trapped on one side of the cylinder. Now, if we put a force on that piston, the air or gas trapped inside the cylinder would build up pressure, which in turn would push back on the piston. And that pressure inside the chamber is equal to the force divided by area, where the area is the cross-sectional area of the piston. You see, when a force acts on this piston, it builds up pressure inside this gas, which in turn pushes against the piston in the opposite direction, according to this equation. And much in the same way, when a compressive force acts on a part, the molecules within that part work against that compressive force in order to keep the part from collapsing. Now, we don't call the internal force within a part pressure. We refer to it as stress. But if you look at the equation for stress, given by the Greek letter sigma, it's equal to the force within the part divided by the cross-sectional area of the part. So imagine we took a saw and sliced right through the middle of the part, normal to the long axis of the part. The area of that cut face is what we call the cross-sectional area. And it's important to see, especially from this equation, that the stress produced by compressing this rod is ultimately no different than the pressure which is produced in compressing this gas. Now, mechanical stress works the same way when a part's under tension that it does under compression. It's just rather than trying to take and squish the molecules together, like we did with our gas here, we're trying to stretch them or pull them apart. Now, looking at the units, you can see there's force divided by area, which is going to leave us with newtons divided by meters squared, which we refer to as pascals. And this should feel familiar, it's the same units that we see for pressure. Now just like when dealing with pressure in a gas, if we were to say increase the area of a piston, would produce more force on that piston. And much in the same way, if we were to say make this rod fatter, and therefore its cross-sectional area was greater, we would reduce the stress in that part for a given force. Or conversely, we could put a greater force on the part in order to produce a certain stress. Now this equation for normal stress can be applied to objects under both tension and compression. But realize, there's some pretty major differences in what will happen to an object if you try to stretch it as opposed to compress it. Now you may already know that when you push on a confined gas, it's going to compress. But what you may not realize is that when you push or pull on a solid part, it's also going to change size. And that leads us up to something called strain. You see, strain is given by the Greek letter epsilon, which is equal to the change in length over a total length of a part. Now, I don't really like the way this is written typically. I prefer to look at it as a final length minus an initial length divided by an initial length. Ultimately, it's the same equation. I just find it a little bit more useful to write the equation this way. You see, anytime we subject a part to a stress, it's going to experience a strain. If we try to stretch that part or place it under tension, it's going to increase in length. And if we compress a part, it's going to experience a decrease in length. And there's a couple of really important things to note with this strain equation. The first is that if a part is stretched, like when it's under tension, the final length is going to be greater than the initial length, which means that change in length and therefore the 
strain is going to be positive. On the other hand, if we put a part under compression, it's going to get shorter, and therefore the final length is going to be less than the initial length, which leaves us with a negative change in length, and therefore a negative strain. Another odd characteristic of strain shows up when we take a look at the units. You see, strain is given by a change in length, which can be measured in meters, divided by a total length, which is also measured in meters. Ultimately, this means strain is dimensionless. It's a ratio of the change in length to the total length. And to better understand that concept, let's take a look at a block hanging from a chain. You see, the hanging mass would pull downward on the chain, putting the entire chain under tension. But rather than looking at the entire chain, let's talk about what would happen to just a single link within that chain. See, each link in the chain has some length L, but the force in that one chain link would cause it to stretch by some distance. Now, each link in this chain is going to stretch some distance. And so the total distance which this block moves downward or stretches the chain is going to be the sum of all of those little individual stretches. Ultimately, this, what this means is by adding links in this chain, or really making the chain longer, the block is going to move down farther. But according to this strain equation, the change in length is always going to be proportional to the total length of the chain, regardless of how many links are in the chain. Now in the future we're going to talk about how stress and strain relate to one another in something called the modulus of elasticity, or Young's modulus. But for now this has been normal stress and strain. I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.